Today is day 151 of Blender. It is also Friday, July 8th, 2022. And today I'm going to do another text animation in Blender along with this rendering and possibly changing the color of each individual letter. I don't know if I can do that yet. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to go over here to Geometry Nodes, kind of by the spreadsheet a little bit, and I'm going to click on New to create a new Geometry Node system. And I'm just going to disconnect the input, which is the cube, from the output so that it doesn't output. doesn't mean that it's not there anymore. If I go into edit mode by pressing on tab and layout, I can see that it's still there. It's just not being outputted into the scene unless I, you know, output it into the scene. But we don't need that right now because what we are going to work with is text. And another word for text is string. So I'm going to do shift A and I'm going to search for the string to curves node. And what this does, it turns my text to curves or my string to curves. Um, and so each letter is going to be a curve instance. So in other words, it's going to be a curve. And it makes it possible for me to use a certain node that is only um, allowed to be used on curves, whether, um, well, yeah, well, you'll see. So right now I'll say, I want my string to say Olivia. But notice nothing happens, and that's because we haven't um, connected the string to the geometry for the output. But once I do that, you'll see that it actually outputs in the layout. At this point, I'm going to go to Object Properties and change the rotation of the X to be 90 so that it rotates 90 degrees um, along the X axis, which in this case is the red one. And I'm going to go here to the font, and I'm going to just open Arial Black, and I should change that way. Um, now here's what I was talking about. So at this point, I want to fill up the letters. And so I'm going to do shift A and search up for the node fill curve. But this is only a node that I can use if I'm working with curves. And so if this weren't curves, I wouldn't be able to do this because I believe if I go to mesh, that's not an option. There's no fill mesh. Um, but there is, um, a curve option of fill curve, and I wouldn't be able to use that if it wasn't a curve instance or if the letters weren't curves. So that's the use case for string to curves. Um, if I go to wireframe, notice that the filling type is kind of messy if I change it or if I have it at triangles. But if I change it to n-gons, it's a little bit, it's actually not a little bit, it's actually a lot more cleaner, which is, um, what I would prefer. So I'm going to change it to n-gons, leave that as that, and go back to solid bone. Now, if I go here, see that it's kind of flat. So in order to give it some volume, I'm going to use the extrude mesh um, node. I'm going to put that right in between these two nodes here. And notice um, that this is actually, extrude mesh is a mesh node. It's over here um, and not a curve node. And why can we use, why can we now use a mesh node? Because when I applied the fill curve, it, it applied a face to the um, curves, which then allows the curves to become actual mesh. Um, and now it's the curves or the letters are mesh and now I can use mesh nodes. And in th at this point, I'm just going to change the val value, I can't even speak, zero to 0 0.1. And that should kind of decrease it a little bit. But if I notice um, in the back, it's not filling, like the fill curve didn't apply um, after I extruded the mesh. And so in order to fix that, I'm gonna do Shift A and I'm going to join geometry put that in the middle and currently it has the extrude mesh but i also want to join the fill curve and when i do that it joins both both the effect of the fill curve and the extrude mesh joins them together so they work together so now notice that it fills right in the front and in the back now this is it for the visual of the text at this point one more thing that i would like to say is if i go to the little wrench icon and properties panel which is the modifier properties um, notice that the geometry system appears as a modifier. So it is known that geometry nodes are considered to be custom modifiers. So just like I add any modifier here, it's the same thing. There are values that I can control and etc. Um, and if I want to control certain values from my geometry node system, which I'm going to call um, text, if I want to control certain values, for example, like the um, thickness of the letters, which is the extrusion value, I can just plop this value and drag it and connect it into the input. And then it would appear here and I can control it now as I would any other um, value from any other modifier. So again, I'm gonna keep it at 0.1. So that's just one thing. Now on to the movement of the letters. So for this, I'm gonna do shift A and then translate instances. 
I'm going to put that right there in the middle. And what this does, it just, again, it moves each of the letters. And so if I move it on the X, it's going to move left and right. If I move it on the Y, up and down. And if I move it on the Z, forward and backward. But I don't want the letters to just move all at the same time and only in one axis. I want them to move like like bounce, right? So I'm gonna go and set these back to zero. And in order to get a little bit more control on this, um, I'm going to basically use another object to control each of the individual letters. So I'm gonna click on layout at the top here and then do shift A and then select an empty plane axis. And then I'll go back to the actual text and I'll go to my outliner and just hover over empty and drag it into here. And now I have the object information of that empty. So like the location of the empty, the rotation of the empty, and the scale, and etc. So at this point, I want to be able to get the position of, or the distance between the position of each letter and the position of the empty. And what that's going to do, actually, I'll show you in order to get that, I'm going to do shift A position, right, to get the position of each letter. And I'm going to do shift A and do vector math because I'm getting the distance between two shapes, two vectors. So I'm gonna change this to distance, and now I'm gonna get the distance between each letter as one vector, and then the location of um, the empty is gonna be the second vector, and it's getting the distance between those two um, locations, and that value is what's being outputted in here. So now real quick to show you kind of the um, idea or the logic behind this, notice now that the O, right, and the empty, they have like zero distance, between each other. And we can see that in the spreadsheet over here. If I go to instances, the first instances, which is number zero, the position is zero, zero, zero. That's the O. And when I, so when I get the position of O and the position of the empty, and I get the distance between those two points, this value should be zero. And we'll see that once we, once we connect that to the translation. So what it's going to do, it's going to move, it's going to translate these letters in accordance with the distance in accordance to what the distance is between its the letter itself and the empty. So if I put this in here, the O shouldn't move from its position because the translation is zero, so therefore it shouldn't move. And notice that over here in the spreadsheet, you can see that all of the other um, letters' positions moved, but the O did not. Again, if I move it, you can see that it's zero, zero, zero up here. And if I put it back in here, the translation, it's still zero, zero, zero. It has the same position. And you can also see that visually in the layout that the O did not move because it's taking the distance between the letter, the position of the letter and the empty. And you know that, right, it has a zero, zero, zero position or distance from the empty. And so that value is zero. And so when I say the translation to, when I set the translation to be that value, it's going to move um, zero right position because the value is zero so you can see that here also um anyway that was just a little in logical thinking thingy anyway um at this point um if i move the empty and i do g x it kind of moves weird and i only want it to move up and down so in order to kind of fix that i'm going to go here and do shift a and then i'm going to combine x y z and i'm going to put that right there and now if I move the empty and do G, X, G for grab, and then X to grab along the X axis, it's moving in the right, not the right direction, still not up and down, but it is moving though um, in the same line, if that makes sense. But in order to actually, oh, you know why? Because it's actually supposed to be in the Y, whoops. So grab and then move, and now it's moving up and down. I was like, that's weird. All right, so make sure that it moved. The value is connected to the Y and not the X. It's going to be automatically connected to the X if you just pop it in there, but make sure it's on the Y because you want it to move up and down. So if I do G, X on the empty, notice that now the individual letters move up and down. Um, but here's the thing. If you also notice, as I'm closer to a letter, so for example, as I'm closer to O, it's all the way down it's lower and if the farther away from my letter the farther uh, i am away from a letter like a the higher it is and i want it to be the opposite because if you think about it in a text animation when you want um you want the letter to go up when you get closer or when the empty gets closer to the letter so in order to fix that i'm going to go here and do shift a and i'm going to do color ramp 
and put that right in between here. And I'm just going to go here and flip the color ramp. So now it's just right, just how I like it. So if I'm closer, or at least when I'm closer to a letter, it goes all the way up. And the farther away I am from a letter like A, it's all the way down, which is what I wanted. All right. So back to this. Um, if I go and do, let's see. Let me move this again. So if I control the empty and do GX, notice that it's it's bouncy, right? But it's not, what if I want to control the height or the distance that it goes up? So the way I do that is by doing Shift A and adding a math node and putting that right in there and changing it to multiply. And so now I can use this value. Notice that if I do GX, it won't move past this like certain line over here. Let me actually go to front view by pressing the button and an escape key. So it won't move past this certain line, which is actually one because again, the color ramp actually um, maps from zero to one. So um, this would be, you know, this would be zero. That's so horrible. This would be zero and then this would be one, right? Um, and so if I move the empty, which is this over here, it would never pass that line. But in order to kind of, um, how do you say it, change that, you can change the multiplier value to be something like, I don't know, two. And now if I do this, GX, notice that it will pass that line all the way um, to like 0 0.5 times two, because I believe it was 0 0.5 automatically or by default. So it would be 0 0.5 times two, or would it be actually would it actually be, um, either way, um, it's just increasing. So the higher this value is, the higher it goes. Um, so I'm going to leave it to two. And then let me see. Let me just delete the notes. Um, I'll leave it to two. And then another way I can control this. So again, I am able to put this value in the input so that I can control it in the modifiers. Or I can get the scale and have the scale of the empty and allow that to be the controlling factor of my multiplier. So if I put this here um, and I scale the empty, now the scale of my empty is what affects the value or what determines the value of my multiplier and how high the, um, the letters will bounce to. So I'm just gonna keep that to where it was. Anyway. So that's one thing. And then notice that if I do move the empty and I do G to grab and then X to grab on the X axis, the letters are going, if I go like at a constant speed, the letters are going at the same speed. They're going up and down at the same speed. But what I want is I want um, the letters to start up fast and then slow down once they get to the top and then go fast back down. Because in physics, if you remember, um, when you go up fast, you slow down because you reach, reach the peak, the peak, and then your result, your result, what am I saying? Your velocity is zero. And then when you go back down, you accelerate. And that's what I want. I want it to accelerate faster. Um, and so I want it to go up fast, slow down at the peak where the velocity is zero, and then go fast um, down. So in order to fix that, um, or at least have that happen, I can do shift A and add a float curve node and put that right over here okay and what that does is i can just make a curve right and now if i move the gx i notice that if you look at the o it goes if i move at a constant speed or if you look at all the letters if i move at a constant speed that was going up fast and then they slow down at the top and then they go downward fast so up fast, slow down at the top, and they go downward fast if I'm moving at a constant speed. So that's what I wanted. So it's a little bit of a really nice effect. Um, and you can kind of tinker with that. Um, okay, but that's pretty much all there is for that. Let's see. Um, and now we can move on to the, um, what do you call it? The material. So I'm going to do control S to save this real quick. Today's date seven eight twenty two. Save under file. Okay. So at this point, um, that's it. Honestly, for the 
sort of stuff. But now to actually render it so that you can have it as an actual animation and not just on Blender, there's um, a thing you have to do. So you go to layout, right? And I always like to do shift A and then, you know, a plane. Um, S to scale, G to grab, X to grab on the X axis. And then I like to go into edit mode by pressing on tab. Um, clicking on edge select, which is the top left icon there, selecting the back edge, E to extrude, and then Z to extrude on the up and down axis, which is the Z axis. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll go back to object mode by pressing um, tab, going to the modifiers property, adding in a bevel modifier, and that's going to add a bevel to that edge, which is kind of, um, you know, giving, making it seem as like a backdrop. So I'm going to increase the amount and the segments and then right click shape smooth. And then I'm going to press S and then X to scale on the X axis. And so this is kind of my sit setting here. Um, and then at this point for the actual rendering, I'm going to pull up my timeline and I'm going to press N to pull up my end panel. And I'm going to go to item or the transform panel thingy. Anyway, um, I'm just going to select the empty and I'm going to do GX and I'm going to move all the way kind of right before it starts affecting the O. And so that position right there is the first position that I want um, my video to start in. So I want my video to be 80 frames. So um, by the way, the less frames it is, the faster it goes, the more frames it is, the more longer it takes for, our, for your animation to complete. So I'm gonna do 80 frames and I'm going to set the position that it's currently in. Um, the empty, let me rephrase. I'm going to set the position that the empty is currently in um, to be fixed in frame one so that it starts at that position. So I'm going to hover over the location on the X axis, which again, remember it's the red axis. Um, and I'm going to hover over that location. I'm going to press I to insert that position into my timeline or insert keyframe. That's what it stands for. And notice that it actually does insert that keyframe as a yellow diamond in the timeline. So it starts, it will always start there. And then I'm going to go to keyframe 80 and I'm just going to select the empty and press G to grab X to grab on the X axis. And I'm going to go right after it stops affecting that letter, the last letter A. So now that position, I'm going to hover over the current position and I'm going to press I to insert that location on the X. And so if I go back to keyframe one and I play from the beginning, notice that it's going to start at the set position that I said, and it's going to end at the, um, at the set position that I said. And so that's what I'm going to see in my video. All right. So I'm also going to hover over the timeline and press T and set the interpolation to be linear because I want it to kind of loop and to not like have a weird pause at the end of the video. All right. Um, that's it for that. Now let's get on to the material stuff. So I'm going to go back to geometry nodes. Um, I'm going to select the letter, um, the tax actually. I'm going to go to modifier properties and I'm going to change the base color to be a certain color. I don't know what color. Let's figure it out. Palette generator. Maybe this. For now, I wanted to change the color of the individual letters, but we'll do that um, at the final step um, after, kind of like, yeah. So um, notice that it didn't appear here, the, it didn't change color for two reasons. One, we're not in material preview, so we can only view materials in material preview. And even then, it's still not changing color. And the reason for that is because right now, we're changing the color of the cube. And remember, the cube is not being outputted into the layout. What we are working with is a string to curves. And so in order for us to see the material, I'm gonna have to use a shift A um, node set material and put that right in between there and actually select the material. And now I'm able to see it. All right, so that's done for that. I'm gonna do control S to save that real quick. And I'm going to go to rendered preview now, um, but I'm gonna actually go to layout and then rendered preview. All right, so at this point, I'm going to select the light, and I'm just going to go to Object Data Properties, which is the light bulb icon here, select Sun, and change the strength to 3. I'm going to deselect the shadow so that there's no shadows, um, and I'm going to just grab it by pressing G, and then Y to move it along the Y axis, which is the green one, and then I'm going to do R to rotate so that there's some, you know, color here. Oops, something like that. All right, so that's good. Um, and then at this point, I'm also going to go to um, my camera and I'm going to set up my camera view. So I'm just gonna dec decrease the um, object, uh, not the object, the timeline. And then I'm just gonna go to front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front. 
And I'm just going to go a little bit like that. Kind of set up my camera. So I'm going to do Control Alt Numpad 0. If you do not have a numpad, you can go to Edit, Preferences, Input, and then Emulate your numpad. Check that on. Um, and that would emulate, you know, your numpad. It would pretend that your number keys are your actual numpad. Um, that's what I have. I don't have a numpad, so I do that. Um, and now if I go back to frame one and I play it, that's what I'm going to be seeing in my, um, what do you call it? In my render or my video. Okay. To get out of this view, you go and press the middle mouse button. And just, I want to move it a little bit more over here. Something like that. Okay, perfect. Um, and then if you get out by this view by accident and you want to go back to it without changing it, you can press zero and it'll go back to the view. All right, um, at this point, that's good. Um, now I'm going to render. So again, I'm going to try to change the color after this. It's going to be like an expiration thing, but I'm going to finish the video with everything and then I'll try to change the individual color of the letters and see if that works. If not, then whatever. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Am I missing something? I don't even know. Oh yeah, I was going to change the background of the um, plane. So I'll go to modifier property. No, I mean material properties. Um, on While selecting the plane, clicking on new, and then just changing it all the way to white. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, and then I'm going to go here to output properties. And um, taking that folder and go to desktop, blender, animations, and creating a new um, folder for all my frames to render to. So I'm going to do 7, 8... 22 and what did I say Olivia? So now all of my frames are going to go into this folder. Um, again, frames and images are going to be used interchangeably. So all of my frames are going to be imported or exported, I guess, um, as PNG images. And that literally is all there is to it. So now I'm going to render and render animation. And then if I go to my folder and desktop, you'll see that the um, frames have started, you know, appearing there. And then once it reaches, it's going to go all the way to 80. And then I'm going to go to the video editor and put them all together as an image sequence. And then I'm going to render the animation so that the video pops up. Um, so wait a few seconds. All right, so let's see. Yeah, it's done. So I'm going to close this out. Close this out. Now I'm going to go over here, scroll up, all the way to video editing. Click on video editing. Move this all the way up. And then I'm going to do add and then image sequence. And I'm going to go to the folder where all my frames are and select the first one. Scroll all the way down and shift select the last one. So it selects everything in between. Add image strip. And now this is what's going to appear, you know, as our video. At this point, we want to render it correctly. So I'm going to go to my output and create a folder where my video can go to. And I'm going to just put that in there, except I'm going to change the file format to be um, FFMPEG video. And I'm going to change, if I go into encoding, I need to change the container to be MPEG4 and the quality to be high quality. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to go back to the render, render animation. And then you'll see the video pop up over here in a few, whoops, wrong folder, in a few seconds. And this is the final result. All right, so now this is the end of the video, but it's also not because now I want to try to see if I could change the, um, how long is this video? 23? Okay. I want to try to see if I can change the individual colors of it. So if I go to shading, I don't know if I can do this though. I don't know. Let's see. Um, I go to shading, shift A, color ramp. And then maybe, no, I don't think it's going to work. Wait, am I, I'm not even selecting the right thing. I think I'm selecting, yeah, I wouldn't select the right thing. Okay, you press X. Select the text, shift A, color ramp. Change that to the base color. Oh my god, stop. I think it's going to work. Oh my god, it's going to work. And then I can change. No way. Hold on. Okay. I'll take this color and then change the color over here. Hex. Put that in there. No way. And then I'll take this color and select this little tab and change that color there. 
and then change it to constant so it's only those colors. But then I wouldn't block that way. Hold on, constant RGB. Interesting. We got cardinal. These one, constant. These. Constant. Let me see what can I do. And if it was um linear, it would be colors in between, but I only want it to be certain colors. How would I make it random? Let me see. I could have an object information. But would that even make sense? But that wouldn't be for the cube, would it? Oh no, I can't see it out there. Hmm. I wouldn't be able to do that. It's not random. Is there anything that I can do that's... No. Oh, hmm. maybe there is something about... I think there's something where I could do like instances. Not instances, like indices. Trying to think. I'm not sure. I think it has to be a mesh dome, but I can't do that because then the whole geometry node system kind of backfires on me. And the animation wouldn't work, which sucks. Um, and this wouldn't work either. It wouldn't be random, and I need that object information, but that wouldn't work because it's not, it's a geometry node system. And if I did the empty, that wouldn't work either. Like, it's not even. Let's see, object info, maybe? Random. <gasps> Stop it, oh my god, it's working. Stop, oh my god, no, not me, no way. No way, no way, no way, no way. Oh my god, stop. No way. This is so cool. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let me pick another color. Create a new one, add, and then just pick that color. Whoa, that's beautiful. Nice, and it is random. And I believe I can change, I think I can choose um, each individual, the color of each individual letter if I kind of work with the object index, maybe. But I have to set that up somewhere and I don't really, I'm not sure, I watched a video but I don't remember where it was. If I go to, I think I remember where it was. Hmm. Anyway, I think this is good for today, though. This is really, really... I'm so proud. Like, I solved a problem. Yes. That's amazing. Okay, I'm so excited. Oh my god, like, this is actually really exciting. This is really good. And it's gonna work the same, so if I go over here, and I play the video, it's gonna work exactly the same, which I think is amazing. That is beautiful. Okay, by the way, I didn't even explain anything. So I have to go to shading, right? And I used a color ramp and I put the colors that I wanted and I changed it to constant so that it only uses those colors and it's not like a linear gradient, right? Um, because if I do a linear gradient, see that like this color, I didn't exactly use it, but because it's gradient, it would use it. But if I put um, constant, it will only use those constant colors that I put in there. Um, how about I added one more color like this? Actually, I'll use a lot of all the colors. Just paste that in there. And then maybe one more color. Look what I made out of the plate. And paste that there. What's a color that's not being used right now? And it's being used multiple times. How many letters? One, two, three. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that makes sense. Kind of play around. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my god, I'm literally so happy right now. All right, um, and then I'm going to go to layout, and I'm just going to redo this because I really want it like this. So I'm going to go to zero, kind of see that view here, and I'm going to go render, render animation. Wait, did I do the right thing? Hold on, let me change the folder to, like, desktop, blender, animations, Olivia, and I'll do Olivia part two. Put that in here, and that's where all the frames are going to go to. And I'm going to change this back to, uh, where was it? PNG, where's PNG? Excuse me? Where is it? Oh, right here. <laughs> okay. Um, control S this. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have saved the other file too. Anyway, whatever. Render animation. Ah, <gasps> no way. It's not rendering with the material. That's an issue. Okay, how do we do that? Ooh, another thing I have to learn. All right, material output, base color, Eevee, no, I'm wondering why it's not rendering, so let me think, um, does it have to do with the composite, compositor, is that how you pronounce it, shader, no, Output, material output, but that is a material output. All, oh, it should be all. Let me think, why wouldn't it be rendering? Unless I have it over here as... Use nodes. Use nose color. Hmm. Huh. Then why is it not using the nodes though? What do I call this? I'm gonna call this whoops random. And is there any way that I can input a texture from the shader? Hmm. I'll put random use nodes, don't use nodes, use nodes, don't use nodes. So I guess it has to do with if I go to render properties, I needed to use I needed to use nodes. Where would that be here? Maybe it would just be here, former. <laughs> Render, blah, blah. Color. No. Crypto. Sounds like Superman's weakness. Units. Scene properties. Huh. How would I fix this? Color ramp. The important display. Alright, let's Google it. Hmm. 
No, that's not what I want. Do I have to map the textures? Don't tell me I have to do that because I will cry. I create new open. Nope. And the result. I don't wanna, oh my god, this is so annoying. Let me switch up. Um, dating. No, it's not showing up. You're you're kidding me, right? Don't you tell me I have to do this in cycles. Oh, cause shading is for cycles. There's no way, bro. Um, I am so confused. GPU comp here. Okay, let me try opening a new one and seeing if maybe my blender's a problem or am I the problem? Like, let's see. General. Okay, let me go to geometry nodes. Moving this. Oh no, but then I have to do everything again. Do I have to? No, I'll just do like, okay, shift A. String. To curves. I won't do any of the animation stuff. I just want to see if the color can change. That's it. Uh, if I go to shading. <gasps> Oh, why? I think I just realized. I think I just realized. Let me go back to EV, back to geometry nodes. Oh, it is there. So why isn't it working? Like, what? Need somebody help. Need somebody. What, where was I? I was in the other window. All right, let me see. Shift A, Project Information, and then Shift A, Color Ramp. Um, random in here. Excuse you. Color goes into here. Random goes into here. Then I'll put some random colors. Okay, something like that. Make it constant. Oh, this over here. All right, and then in geometry nodes, I'll do set material to be not even showing it. I mean, it should be that one. Oh, it does. So I come on. All right, so it works there. So at this point, I want to render it. So if I go and render animation, it should. Yet, are you kidding me? See, it works. So what's the issue? So hey, what? What is the issue? Okay, see, always try it out in another in another blend because you don't even know if Blender is a problem. All right, clearly Blender is a problem, here. or maybe it's not the problem. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. I do, I do. I just no, obviously I do. I just did it. I just don't know why though. It's not rendering here. 
I don't even- Oh, because it's only rendering- Why am I so dumb? It's because it's only rendering this. Let me delete this. That's what it's rendering. Um. PNG part two. Render animation. Ah. Wow. God is good. God is good. See, so the problem was that it was only rendering the image strips from the old one because it was in the video editor and that's what it was rendering despite the fact that i set fi i set the file format to be png anyway okay thank you god that was great that was great see love that um okay how about i go back to blender animations what am i doing again olivia yes i don't know olivia part two and then they should be here perfect this is so exciting and then i go back over here and I add an image strip or image sequence. So you select the first one, scroll all the way down, shift to like the last one, add image strip. And now it changes back to how it was. Okay, control S and then render animation. Oh, whoops. Uh, I didn't set the folder. That's fine. It's going to be the same thing. Here it is. So this is the final result. Isn't that so exciting? Oh my god, this is so exciting. All right, um, I'm so happy right now. Like, yes, I am so happy. Okay, um, anyway, that's it for today. Um, I'm actually so excited that, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna do more because I have to paint. Not that I have to paint, I want to paint right now. And if I do more of this, I won't have time to paint. So, we'll see, hold on. Oh my god, I forgot I have. Okay. So, um, I just want to see the video one more because once more because I'm literally so proud right now. Thank you, God. Olivia. I mean, look at how whoops, not you. Look at how pretty she is. Oh, so beautiful. The balance, the interpolation could be better though, but it's staying up like real long. But it's okay. It's so pretty. All right, um, right, control S, close that out, and did this help? No. Um, okay, and that's it for today. Bye. Oops, wrong thing. Bye.